All right, welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over setting up proper reference for your model, and then we're going to be taking it into NIFScope so we can prepare it for final process, which is the creation kit, and then you get to play around with it in game. So for this, I need to extract our template mesh. So I'm going to be using the FO3 archive. So we need to open an archive. So what this is going to do is going to allow us to open the BSA files found in Skyrim. So I'm just going to open up the meshes. Now for my mesh, I have already predetermined which weapon I want to use as a reference. So I'm going to be using the ebony under weapons. So ebony, and I'm going to replace the sword, just the one-handed sword. So control clicking our next one. So I'm going to take the ebony sword and the first person ebony sword. And then I'm going to extract selected. Now you can extract this anywhere. For me, I have a Skyrim template data, so I can keep coming back and using them as reference if I'm going to replace the same weapon. So I'm just going to select and it's going to extract it. So now I need to do what I need to do is open up Maya or your 3D program. And for this to work, especially in Maya or 3ds Max or even Blender, you'll need a proper plugin. For this I'm going to be using Maya, so I'll be giving you guys a link to the Maya plugin. This is 2012, by the way. So I'm just going to load up my weapon scene. Just give it a sec. I'm just going to hide my background. So I got my weapon right here. It's already referenced, but I'm going to go through the process of doing it with you guys. So uh, I'm just going to hit import. I already have my plugin installed. It should be installed, which is not loaded up. All right. Go to my plugin manager, and I should be looking for NIF. Ah, there it is. NIF translator loaded, auto load. Then I'll refresh my plugins. And now that should work. So if you look down here, yeah, net immerse file format is right there. So going to where we extracted our mesh. So I'm just gonna open up the ebony. Now I'm just you can pick whichever one you want. I'm just gonna take the ebony sword. And now it actually comes in. So all we need to do for this, we can delete that. As you can tell, it's already set up as close as I could. So this will work. You just want to overlay it so the handles match up. Now that that's done, we want to delete all our history and then freeze our transformations. So that way everything's zeroed out. And then we want to export our weapon as an OBJ, which I already have done, but I'll go over the process. So I'm just going to run to my desktop, modding. I'm actually just going to save it right here. So I'm going to call this Sprint's Edge, and I'm just going to export selected. So now we are done for setting up a reference. All right, so the next part of this tutorial, we need to, since we got our OBJ right here, we need to go into NIF scope. So what this is going to do is going to set up, allow us to set up our textures, our collision data, etc. And, you know, export it and save it as a NIF. So let's open up NIF scope. All right. Now we're going to use the same reference we exported. So I'm going to start with the first person. And 
let's go in our fade node, which has all the our data for the meshes and whatnot effects. So right now, since we don't have edge blood or anything like that, we can just get rid of it. Uh, so we can right click on it, go block, and then remove branch. We can do the same thing for this one. Because I don't have that set up in my model. And since the scabbard is sort of covering the blade, which would look weird on our model, we can go block, remove branch. So basically we just want our sword. So I'm going to click on our sword in 3D viewport. I'm going to go import, uh, import OBJ. First the importing mesh will be replaced, yes. And so I'm just going to select the preset one I already have here. It's basically the same one that I exported. So actually for tutorial's sake I will use this one. So it's going to show up, it's going to say material none. That's fine. If here shows up with material, that's fine also. So here is our mesh that we have. You first want to check to make sure everything's zeroed out in your translation, which is ours. Well, fine. And now I'm going to go into my material property, right click, I'm going to delete this branch. And now we need to take our lighting shader property and move it into the tri shape. So in order to do that, we select our tri shape for our weapon. We go down into the properties, click this little arrow. And now we need to enter in the corresponding number, which is for the BS lighting shader property, we need to enter in 9. And then hit enter. Notice how it moves it under our tri shape. So now we have a shader. Now we open up our shader property and we go into the texture set. This is where we applied our previous, we should ap apply our previous textures. So if we hover over here, we can see the order in which our texture should be applied. Or, as you notice, zero is our diffuse, one is our normal, slash gloss, which is our specular. Um, two is our glow, skin, and hair. Three is our height and parallax. Four, we got our environment and then our, our environment mask. So I'm just going to click this little purple flower kind of thing. I'm going to go into where I saved out my maps. Is right here. So I got my diffuse. Notice how it applies it. We're going to go and use our normals right here, which is not bad. And then our environment mask that we saved out. You technically don't really want to change the environment because it already, it's already pre-set up. So you can kind of get away with it. If you want to do a custom environment, you know, go right ahead. So that pretty much covers it right now. If I had a glow mask, I could put it up here and set up a glow. So that's pretty much about it. But there's one thing we need to go over, which is resetting up our normals. Right now it's not really lighting properly. We get these weird... You know, lighting artifacts. So we're just going to select it, go spells, batch, and then update all tangent spaces. It gets rid of all that, that weird lighting, the lighting problems between the polygons. But there's one more step we need to do, so just to make sure there's no problems. So we're going to click on our mesh, right click, under mesh, we're going to go face normals. Notice the big difference in the lighting. This should clear any lighting troubles that you may have. If your model is properly done, there shouldn't be any. 
any lighting problems on it. So now we can go save as and you technically you want to save your document into your Steam. So we'll go Steam Games oh sorry, not Steam Games. Uh Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and then we're gonna go into data. And since this is a mesh, we're gonna have to go into meshes, uh weapons, and we can actually put this anywhere we want. So I can create a new folder. Cool weapons. I can save it in here. I'm going to save it. All right, so now we technically have to do the same thing for our second model right here. So repeating the process. Move branch, move branch, move branch, select a model, import as OBJ. Select that, go into our fade, try shape, remove our material, go to our properties, try shape, and then bring in our lighting. Diffuse, our normal environment. Spells, batch, update, right click, mesh, and then phase normals. And there we go. Then file, save as. And then you can save it in the same spot. So we go back to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, go to your Skyrim folder, your data, meshes weapons, cool weapons, and I'm just going to save this as Serpent's Edge. Save. And that concludes this part of the tutorial. In the next part, we're going to go over the creation kit process of getting your weapon set up in-game, setting it up for making it craftable. Alright, thank you for watching.